Hello, greeting, my name is Eric Lee. Uh, in my early days, okay, uh, how did I start? My first experience in the martial art was when I was very, very old. I was actually like a baby. Mm -hmm. My grandmother took me to Chinese opera. Where they have opera Kung Fu. Oh, that was my first impression. And after that, my father was practicing with a style called Choi Lei Fat, and then uh, Choi Li Fat. Choi style, Li style, and the Buddha style, they call Choi Lei Fat. Actually, three styles combined together, that's known in southern China, and that's what my father practiced. And after six o'clock evening, and he would go out the patio, and the instructor would come out with a whole bunch of people and practice in the, the yard, and that's I got impression that when I, I still remember very, very vividly, and then I feel that uh, that was my first impression, and then all I did is watching him play every day, and then he played martial art, and then Charlie Fat, and I remember his teacher was bald head with white hair, <laughs> and that was that was a while back. I was only two years old one or two years old, as far as I can remember. I remember, and uh, he took picture of me, and he said, oh, this is my son, but he, he dropped me. And that's why I still got headache. No, just kidding. Uh, anyway, uh, and then I, I, when I was six years old, when I was six years old, I went to Hong Kong, and there, I said, wow, what a big city, in that full of martial arts school and church all kinds of food and then wow this village is really big remember I came from china with a small village with about only 125 people when i went to hong kong i said wow this is really a big village actually is a city called hong kong and then i remember uh, i lived in that a uh, long time ago when, when i was very young my father uh, will open up earth shop. That's I was interested in healing, and that's part of the martial art. Because I believe if you learn how to hit, you have to learn how to heal nowadays. And then so what happened then? And I see all kinds of theater, martial arts, uh, operas, and all kinds of things. So those days in Hong Kong, uh, they were. Uh, a lot of schools and Chen Wu Association. Uh, I was fascinated by those things. I was, and I captured a lot of those memories in the past and still here. And then that's when I was very young. I was always very active, you know. And so I swim, run, and I watched Kung Fu movie. They were in black and white. And I remember I met uh, Quan Tuck Heng when he was very old. <laughs> And he was almost 100 years old, and he always portrayed the, uh, um, the, the good guy. And the bad guy is uh, Master, uh, Master Hong from Enter the Dragon. He always is a villain in Enter the Dragon, and he always played the bad guy, and Quan Ta Hing always a good guy. So Quan Ta Hing studied the uh, Hong Ga system, so all his style is called Hong Ga system. And then later I was captured by that, and he portrayed a lot of Kung Fu hero from Shaolin Temple. 
okay and then uh, that's way back or like Wong Fei Hong okay he's very well known in China as a fighter and then down the history so it captures a goat theater and theater and theater and I watch two things one is Kung Fu movie uh, black and white and the other one was American movie John Wayne my uncle owns a theater in Hong Kong so I went to watch and everything I did not train but it's captured in my memory in the past Uh, 1960, 60s, 61, 62, and then uh, we moved from Hong Kong to Oakland, California. I only stayed there for two days, and I went to Central America, Manawa, Nicaragua. So I do speak a little bit poquito español. <laughs> so that time, there's a gentleman there working. Um, Working in the supermarket, you know, he is Kung Fu instructor from White Crane. So he, I did not learn much about Kung Fu from him, but I, I learned how to throw the knife. And so that was interesting. There was a big window there. I was on the top, top floor and then I throw, I hit it. And then I got cocky. I went back a little bit, a couple of feet and I hit. Again, I missed, go all the way. There. The knife go all the way down to the floor and some, some wine who was drinking uh, some big big bottle of wine and then broke the bottle and then I and I rushed to the to front and then I see that he saw me, I still holding three or four of those knives and he got really scared. I thought he thought I was gonna kill him, but that was an accident. And so anyway, um, and that was called Bluefield, California. Uh, Bluefield, Manawa, Nicaragua. So, and then I only stayed there for a few months. I learned some English and learned a few movements and throwing knife and things like that. And then I moved to uh, United States in Oakland, California. And those days um, are very, you know, different than today because we didn't have internet. And then I always fascinated by everything there is. And then I went to Machesney Junior High School, the middle school, and one, guy shot me in the neck bang, like that just I uh, he almost killed me and then from there on I really take martial arts seriously because I don't want to get hurt again so I want to pilot I want to see the guy and catching him and then he I, I never seen him again I would I really appreciate him taught me that lesson that inspired me to study martial art so I went to four or five different school and they were in Oakland and uh, and then so different instructor, but they don't. In those days, they don't. They don't talk to each other. They hate each other. I say something wrong. They maybe communication skill, uh, people skill. I later on I find out it's because different style. They don't like to. Okay, this style don't talk to this style. That's the old days, you know. Yes. Uh, um, that's, that's back to old days in Oakland, California. And then I happened to meet Wong Jack Man. He was the guy Bruce Lee fought. And he's not a bad guy. And his, his brother and I went to college later on together in Laney College. And then, and then Wong Jack Man, the school, you know, that time it was on Webster Street in Oakland, California. And my grandfather's poetry is only two blocks away so I just walk over there and then he's okay he's tall and lanky and, uh, and there's nothing wrong with him uh, he, he they make him a bad guy he's not really a bad guy and Bruce Lee is you know I mean the, they fought so of course I was not there but I know that it was very close and um, that time Bruce was uh, not Famous that he's he's one of he's one of the instructor in Oakland, California. So my aunt asked him, "Hey Bruce, uh, I heard you got hurt." I say, "Bruce Lee is." Uh, he said, "In those days, it's no privacy act." Okay. So he said, "How do you know that?" Well, um, I'm a good friend with your doctor. <laughs> so.
I went to study, 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 study in many instructors, and then I come across to uh, Alta Costco. Okay, he took me to tournament, and then he was doing a multi-man attack, at least 20 people, and I was very impressive because he was young, he was 20 some years old, and then I said, that's what I want. He was doing that in President State Fair. So I went there next day and signed up with him. So, and then he introduced me to the tournament, and first I said, why is everybody wearing white uniform? And I don't understand those days because white uniform uh, in China, in old days, they were mourning. Somebody, I, and I said, who died? <laughs> Actually, nobody died. And then they have, you know, those uh, short pants, short keys, and I say, oh, okay, later on I find out. And then I'm Lee, and then they, in those days, they put down Kung Fu. And I said, as a young guy, I, I, I'm Lee also, and then I, I have great love for uh, what, what I understand my father, so I, I protect and I went to compete, I want to beat. It, you can say, uh, I'm very friendly to my competitor, my judge, and I use the energy from the audience, and that's important. And a lot of people get nervous, I don't get nervous, and I actually relax. And the more people there, the better. More friendly, the better. More say hello, the better. So, in those days, uh, I would say the hardest thing to do to compete was not national tournament, it was a state tournament called CKC, California Karate State Championship by Grandmaster Ralph, Cast uh, Ralph Castro. That was his tournament. At that time, I was only, uh, I was wearing <laughs> green belt. But they make me a black belt, so I, I, I have to compete in black belt. And then there was uh, this guy named Johnny something, Johnny Perraro, something like that. Unfortunately, he, he passed on. And then I would, but that time he was dominating the whole area. And he was, it was very difficult to break in. And then you have to be, so what happened in competition in those days, I have a lot of endurance because I run. I run bridges and I, one of my secret formula is no secret now, I'm going to tell you. Bruce East, white rice, um, um, Bruce East, white rice, soy sauce, all together, exactly two hours, I got maximum energy and I eat a big bowl of it, I was uh, no problem, but now I don't eat as much rice now. So what happened? You have, I have a lot of endurance, so we have to compete six times. I remember six times. So he do one because he dominated. Nobody want him to lose because he was champion. At the time, I didn't know what, what it is, and I didn't know what, what corner and how to bow about the wrong way. I bow to the audience instead of judge. <laughs> it's funny. So what happened is uh, that time, I really appreciate he was a great showman. He was very, very good. It's very hard to, to do. And what I did first form and second form and also fight and I did weapon. And then the sixth one, he ran out of gas. That's why I beat him. And because I got tremendous of energy at the time. So I, I, I cleaned up the whole place and then a lot of self-confidence. And I went to other national tournament was actually easy because it's all in your head how confident you have and then oh I, I took home six trophy one trophy is no problem so I went to all over the country and compete and then uh, my last competition was October 1973 and uh, the one before that was at the June Reese tournament in Las Vegas that's how same day Bruce Lee died unfortunately July 20th, 1973 in Las Vegas. We have to do a moment of silence for him because we couldn't believe he was a, such a, a great guy and great martial artist and everything, and he died. So we didn't know, and that, that time I won the grand championship, at the same time I met Mike Stone, and he was with Priscilla Presley. And, and that was uh, 
uh, that was fun. All the competition for me is, is sport. You know, it's, it's not a, it's fun, fun sport. So that's how I, I and then lay on somebody because I compete so much and then uh, I won every competition and some sports writer couldn't remember his name. He clung me as the king of kata. But I, I did not call myself that because it was not makeup, it was him. So I have no idea, it just came out so that the title stuck. And then it went on, so that's what happened. And so I have to, because in, when I first competed, a couple of things, they, a lot of guys looked down on us, on me, on, uh, because before me, a lot of guys compete, they were not, uh, I, I don't want to disrespect respect everybody. They were not powerful and speed and showman and uh, so you gotta have speed, power, showmanship and all that stuff together as one well. and you have to have a lot of confidence and then you have to know your stuff, your craft. You can you can do it almost reverse. So that's what you gotta do and then so I didn't that time I was so young I wanted to compete at a tournament and beat that their tournament in their own game. It's strictly driven. It's not just, so I didn't want to lose. So I did, luckily I did pretty well and then I compete all the place, sometimes fighting, sometimes uh, um, form of weapon or combination or three, whatever, every weekend, whenever I heard of something, I go. That's it. And then, so, but later on, I start to teach and all these people and all the students, my, my philosophy is uh, a change because we start to realize it's a gift that we have and then uh, we, we just excel and to the gift that we have and continue to practice and practice. So in Laney College, when I went to in Oakland, California, I was the president of a club where we have many, many different styles of martial artists, uh, uh, judo people, Aikido, and wrestling, boxing, taekwondo, name it, uh, Premantis, and all, everything. So whoever teach, we become a student. Whoever teach, whatever style. So we, I, that time I was interested in everything and everything. Anything can teach us something, I'm interested. For me, and I appreciate a lot of folks out there, they, they are humble and preserve the purity of the system. I hope a hundred years from now, some of this art will still exist, will not be obsolete. It can be because what I did is what I did and a lot of things, the new generation might be forgotten, but don't, the most important thing to me is the character and respect and integrity. Um, Martial ethic is more important than just movement. And unfortunately, a lot of people can punch and kick and they think that's all it to it. I can knock somebody out, can hit somebody, take somebody down, but that's not what it's all about. We do self-defense because we want to preserve health. Yes, we have to be, if somebody try to get you and then you, you measure your size your opponent out, somebody would come out with a Mac 10 and 10 feet away, I'm not gonna be able to block the bullet. I just say, okay, you won. So you have the size, but however, um, now we try to be nice to everybody. Some people might not like the way you do things, might not like the way you habit or thinking, so, so I just accept people as they are, whether they, whoever they are, whatever they are, because just because we can kick and punch doesn't mean we can fly an airplane. So it's different. That's the whole different art. So I look at this way. We are here to learn. We're here, and and I'm a white bear with everything I don't know. Everything I don't know. There's so much we don't know.
Way back then, um, in early 70s, and there's a gentleman named Sam Auret. He, he promoted a tournament called National Black Belt Grand Championship. Howard Jackson, Bill Wallace, Chuck Norris, they were all there. I was there. And then I compete. And he's a psychologist. Now he's 86 years old. And uh, he's a martial artist, of course. And then uh, he said, Eric, you're going to be on a magazine cover. I say, I thought about cover? How can that be? So uh, shortly after that, he shot the cover. I have to do because I do demonstration with strobe lights sometimes. And I have to do, I think, like 200 and some kicks. Same thing, spinning wheel kick. They call it tornado. There's no, I didn't cause tornado but I have to do it and I wasn't tired because I'm so young and just a lot of energy I still have a lot of energy just do the spinning over and over until he get he got it and then he said I got it and then I say it's done I can still I can do some more <laughs> but anyway and he, he, that was my first cover magazine uh, for Black Belt since then and I continue to compete and everything. I got more and more. It's like 50 magazine covers and official karate, inside kung fu, black belt, name it, I was in. But anyway, and he, he, that was my first cover magazine uh, for black belt since then. And I continue to compete and everything. I got more and more. It's like 50 magazine covers and official karate, inside kung fu, black belt, name it, I was in. We should be like a family, learn from each other. I'm trying to be a good role model for the young generation, so trying to inspire them before I expire. That's the idea. And that's why I, 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 did, I did the book that recently came out. It's called The Journey of an Artist by, by Amazon. You can get it from Amazon. Our Kindle book or hard copy, and they're not very expensive. It's my little gift back. So it's the philosophy, and they said a lot about, and everything I said in that book is true, 100% true. There's no politics, no religion. I respect everybody's style, and I, I don't play politics, and there's no, everybody religious people should be get together and make peace. And so if everybody in the world talk to each other, love each other, there wouldn't be no fight, no war. And uh, if you drink a cup of water, you drink finish, and then if you're still, hung, still thirsty, you have to refill the cup of water and drink again. So we always be empty our cup, always the martial art they call beginners. We always a beginning, beginner of everything, something. And at the beginning, we don't know anything. So after a while, you are, you are beginning, you learn the basic stuff, and then you, and then you technically in, get better, and then you become creative, and you, you become innovator. So every system has something to offer. To me, all different systems are great. And then if I look at this system, maybe 90% of the stuff I already can do it or I already learned it. Maybe 10% is good enough. And, and I would be humble to learn the 10% and I appreciate for everything I learned.
Um, I think to my, I can only speak my experience. My experience might be wrong, maybe right for some people. It, I, I'm going to express myself. Okay. Now, uh, I take the past as whatever I experienced, and I appreciate everything I learned from everybody, including martial art, of course, everything. I, they, in the past, some of the people is not here anymore, but they are still, I still remember because they are the one who make our life richer. Okay, very important. So now that we are still here, and like I'm here, I want, I would like to see our future generation have more love, be true to ourselves. Very important. And then no matter how great you are, how good you are, don't go over your head. So put ourselves like a beginner all the time because in truly in life, even giving 100 years on this life is relatively short. We don't know that much. So we, let's say I would like to live longer. I can learn more things. I can share more things to, to different people, but I am not in charge in that department. So, so I do what I can. And if I can make somebody happy, I'm happy too. So um, giving is actually release, uh, receiving is balanced between the two. If you get hungry, you need to eat. When you eat too much, that's not balanced and you become heavy. And then if you do too much work and you get tired, then you need to rest. So it's a balance again. If air conditioning is too cold, then you turn on the heater. And if you, if temperature is too hot, you turn on the air conditioning. So it's constantly balanced. We are constantly balancing our mind, our body, so whatever it takes. Now, I understand not everybody likes to exercise, and uh, I do, and that uh, I feel that is possibility someone can overtrain like I used to, not overtrain anymore, and uh, I learn about how to balance, uh, how to relax, and how to, only when you relax, your chi will flow, your energy will flow. If you're not relaxed and something, it can block up we all have a lot of energy. Sometimes it's just blocked up and we don't know how to release it and how to open up. We have 12 channels in the body and uh, according to the Chinese medicine, this finger here right now, the thumb, is the uh, lung and this one is large intestine. When you put it together, we call this mudra in India. Okay, and the middle finger, American, well, they call it a bird. Actually, it's not the bird. There's no bird landing here. So this actually the cover of the heart and uh, right here and the ring finger, which one? This one here, the forefinger is actually called the triple warmer, the upper body, middle body and lower body. So they call it triple warmer and the small, the small pinky here is called, uh, they call it pinky actually intestine, small intestine. So you can put the, the lung and the heart together. So you, in your lung and heart, you can meditate like this or like that. It doesn't matter. Okay. And then I, I know this much because I, I'm interested to, to go further study because I really believe if you learn how to hit, you have to learn how to heal. That's a big one. And uh, so I'm very interested in healing, uh, natural healing. Uh, I'm not putting down the, the Western medicine or Asian medicine. I like both. For emergency, go to whoever can help you first. And if you want to preserve, live longer, long and happy life is what we want. Harmony, balance, peace, love, and all these things are important. We, the child, when you're born, couple years old, they don't know, they just, there's no, they colorblind and they don't, they're not polluted by the society or the violent things that happen. So they, they learn, they, they just, oh, I'm going to hug you, I play with a the dog, they just do. So I think 
Inside of us, in order to stay young, we should be able to have some kind of child. I like jokes a lot and that keep me young. I have a little dog and um, it's a Jack, Jackie Russell Terrier. Female is Jackie, a male is Jack Russell. And she was born in April 6, I, uh, 2015. So she's now six years old. Uh, so she's still a middle age. So my dog, uh, any dog, they can let go very fast. And uh, seven seconds, she can let go. She wag the tail and let go. But it's, so I'm learning from her. I don't take my dog for a walk. The dog take me for a walk. <laughs> now, um, go back to the, I would like to ask, I don't call this teaching. I call sharing. I'm sharing my information to someone who might be interested to learn and then um, hopefully they are inspired, have enough in them, they can pursue their interest and they be good at it. And then, uh, so Sifu meaning expert. And then it's a working person. When you put enough time and effort into something, you become good at it. If you, it's like a big stone. You have to, if you, in your mind's eye, you know exactly what you want and you just chip away that you don't want and becomes an artistic form of culture or something. Just like painting, picture, I love music, I like painting, I like calligraphy, I like to eat. Uh, good thing I'm not big, so otherwise I have to eat less. So I have to shut my mouth and put a tape on my mouth. So it's, uh, that's it. And uh, I hope some of the information, I'm not always right. I could be wrong. If you're interested, by all means, do, do it. And if you're not interested, so be it. Let it be so. The museum is very important to our being because everything you ever went to in your life is your museum. <laughs> Every experience you, you went to is your museum. Now, Michael Masuda uh, preserved the, there are many martial artists in this museum here that I'm looking at for different culture, different background, and uh, all the way back so it's it's the root and uh, it's a root and move on without the root you will not be here so with the root you can go on and then you create more roots for the next generation and then next when next generation pass on they create another check next generation and the main thing is love what you do and share with what you love it's very important